Hey everyone, welcome to this week's recap. This week's message was called Made for His Glory. So we're going to be looking at what it is to be made for God's glory. We started this week's message by just asking everybody to name a famous person. And in considering that, like, who are they? What have they done? What are they famous for? So just to kind of set the stage, thinking about somebody that is famous. Because when we talk about God's glory, well, we need to define God's glory. Like, what, what is glory? What does that mean, God's glory? If we're made for God's glory, what does that mean? And why is it important? Well, the word glory comes from the Latin word gloria, which means fame or renown. But describing God's glory is no easy task. God's glory is so much more than what we can really comprehend in any given moment. I kind of set the stage and would just ask students to think of their favorite Netflix show or video game. And if you think of it that way, you know, usually people don't have a hard time describing something that they're really passionate about or something that they enjoy watching. They almost want to convince you, oh, this is my favorite show. You need to check it out. The glory of God is like trying to describe the greatest show that's ever been thought up, the greatest show in the entire galaxy of the world. But God's glory, like it's, it's the show that hasn't even been shot yet. It hasn't even been written yet. It's, it's, it's so big and to describe it is so difficult. But that's not to say that we can't experience God's glory or grasp it at all. While it's something incredible and amazing, we'll never be able to fully grasp it, but we can see signposts along the way. And so to think of us being made for God's glory and seeing God's glory, like his fame, his renown, how do we see God's glory along the way in our life? So if you want to turn in your Bibles to Psalm 96, I'm going to read the first nine verses. And the psalmist writes this, O oh, sing to the Lord a new song, sing to the Lord all the earth, sing to the Lord, bless his name, tell of his salvation from day to day, declare the glory uh, his glory among the nations, his marvelous works among all the peoples. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods, for all gods of the peoples are worthless idols. But the Lord made the heavens, splendor and majesty are before him, strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of the peoples, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord glory, do his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in splendor of holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. Let's pray. Father, I just ask that you would continue to bring your word alive to us, to everybody that is watching this clip, that, Father, we would be challenged and changed by the hearing and the reading of your word. We love you, Lord, and say thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. So I asked the students to think of what you guys, what, what is the most beautiful thing that you've ever seen in perhaps it's something in creation, such as a sun setting, cotton candy skies, um, maybe a solar eclipse, uh, maybe a, like a really cool state park and something that is just so majestic in view. It could be something as simple as like a really cool stick bug or something like that. But what are the, think about these moments, these memorable moments and how they can almost take your breath away and how you can almost struggle to find words to describe uh, how beautiful and how majestic those things are. Well, those things are so cool because they have inherent beauty. They have this beauty that is because of our creator. Um, inherent essentially means permanent. It's a beauty that cannot be taken away. And the psalmist talks about these things and commands us to sing, to bless the Lord, to sing of his glory and his goodness. Well, I want to make the point that because of God's beauty and in, in creation and the things that he does because of his glory, it causes us to have this experience of worship to where we might not even be able to have the words to describe what God has done, his inherent beauty in creation. So it causes our hearts to sing. It causes our, us to be in this place of worship. And that brings me to point number one. God's glory is revealed through worship. 
God's glory is revealed through worship. When we see God in creation, as even the psalmist is just writing here, when we experience God, we should be led to worship. We should be led to sing. Uh, we might not have the words to say, but in and all of that, God's glory is revealed through worship. Let's continue through Psalm 96. Um, so verses 10 through 13. Say among the nations, the Lord reigns. Yes, the world is established. It shall never be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens be glad and let the earth rejoice. Let the sea roar in all that fills it. Let the field exalt in everything in it. Then shall all the trees of the forest sing for joy before the Lord, for he comes, for he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world in righteousness and the peoples in his faithfulness. Now, this is a little bit more interesting because when we're talking about God's glory, that we are made for God's glory, his glory is revealed first through, through worship, but his glory is also revealed through his judgment. Have you ever um, felt judged by somebody? And I think that for the most part, it never feels good. We don't wanna be measured based on an action that we have done or maybe a way that we looked one given day. And we often think that like judging can be really bad. Like you don't know me, you haven't, you haven't walked in my shoes. But we also like don't like judging because we probably know deep down we've judged somebody else unfairly. But it's so important to know and walk in this, this way of living that we can know that that's not how God judges. God judges in fairness. He sees everything and he is righteous and he is faithful as seen in verse 13. Those who have trusted Jesus as Lord and Savior can be sure that God will not judge them as unworthy of his love because Jesus died for sins. The psalmist could look forward to God coming to judge the earth because he trusted in the Lord and believed that he would judge the earth and he would make things right. Judgment is, not, is, is only unpleasant for us that are uh, on the wrong side of it. Our God is just, okay? Our God is just, he is faithful, and he is good. So his judgment leads to, to the flourishing of those who trust him. This is all super important as we are looking to experience God's glory. We are made for his glory. We, we can see God's glory revealed through his worship, but we can also see God's glory revealed in his righteous judgment. So that's point number two. God's glory is revealed through his judgment. Um, he has sent his son Jesus. He will continue to work in this world and his judgment in the end will be so good. God's glory is revealed through our worship. God's glory is revealed through his judgment. The last verse that we're gonna look at today is 2 Corinthians chapter 4, one through six. Therefore, having the ministry by the mercy of God, do not lose heart but we have renounced disgraceful and underhanded ways. We have refused to practice cunning or to tamper with God's word, but by the open statement of truth, we would commend ourselves to everyone's conscience in the sight of God. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In, this, in their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For what we proclaim is not of ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, with ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. Verse 6 says, For God, who said, Let light shine out of the darkness. That goes to, back to creation, and what we were talking about in our first recap has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus. At this point, I just ask the students, ask you guys, what keeps you from seeing how great God is? Oftentimes, all of us have something going on in our minds. What has been the thing that you've been thinking about most this week? What has been consuming your thoughts? Now, I ask you to think about this to just kind of evaluate what has been your main focus. Now, 
disclaimer, not here to shame you, but to recognize that we are all spiritually broken. And we all have a tendency to elevate our own thoughts and our own thinking, our wants, our needs, our desires and concerns. But here, Paul says, however, that those who have trusted in Jesus have been given a new ministry that is bigger than themselves. Following Jesus is an invitation to give up uh, living for our own glory, okay? And open our eyes to the greatness of Jesus. This changes everything. When we live for ourselves, we will see people as objects to be used to get ahead. When we see the glory of Jesus and embrace him as Lord, we will show the love of Christ to the people around us. So point three is that God's glory is revealed through his son, Jesus. God's glory is revealed through his son. As we go through life, we can know that we are made for God's glory. We are made for his glory. God's glory is revealed through our worship. God's glory is revealed through his judgment. And God's glory is revealed through his son, Jesus. So the big idea of this week's message was God's glory is revealed through the, his people's worship, his commitment to justice, and ultimately his son. Now, an essential doctrine that we can take away from this week is just God's glory. God's glory. What does that mean, God's glory? When we think of God's glory, here's what we're talking about. The glory of God is his manifest work, the way he represents his perfect character through his activity. It also refers to his excellent reputation and is given as one of the reasons we are to praise his name. Another sense of the word is that is the inherent beauty of God, the unbearable brightness and beauty of his being as he radiates his own ad, uh, attributes and characteristics for all to witness. The scriptures speak of humanity as having fallen short of God's glory. That's seen in Romans 3, 23. But because, uh, we, because we have rejected the purpose for which God created us, and that is to glorify him. God's glory, that's what we need to be living for. God's glory is revealed through our worship. God's glory is revealed through his judgment. And God's glory is revealed through his son. I just want to challenge each and every one of us this week uh, to look for a way to expand our view of God. How can we see him in creation? How can we look for him this week in what he is doing in the world around us? I hope that each and every one of you are blessed. Take care. See you next week.